this video, we'll be looking at how we can plot points and planes um, in three dimensions. To start with, we need to learn how we can represent our x, y, and z axes um, on our paper. One of the ways we can do that is by imagining that we have our coordinate grid, as usual, with a third axis coming out of the page towards us. We label them a little bit differently. The axis that's coming out straight towards us, represented by this diagonal line, is our x-axis. The positive x-axis is coming towards us, while the negative x-axis is going away from us. Left to right, we have our y-axis. Again, positive going to the right, negative going to the left. And then up and down is our z-axis, which is positive going up, negative going down. So if I want to, say, draw a point using my x, y, and z axis, um, one of the ways we can represent that is by drawing a little rectangular prism to locate the point. And I'm going to go step by step. So if the point I'm trying to find is 3, 5, and negative 4, that means I'm going 3 units forward on the x-axis, 5 units to the right on the y-axis, and four units down on the z-axis. Now those three dots that I've just drawn don't represent the point. Rather, these points represent the um, x, y, and z component of the point. To find the actual point, I need to create a rectangular prism. And I do that by imagining some dotted lines extending out from my x and z coordinate and where they meet I just kind of stop my dotted lines imagine some imaginary dotted lines coming out from my z and y coordinates and again where they meet I just kind of stop and some dotted lines coming out from the x and y coordinates. And notice that I'm making these lines parallel to their opposite axis. So I'm creating three sides of a rectangular prism. Now that I've marked three new points, extending the dotted lines that I've drawn so all three meet, and where all three meet represents the point I was trying to draw, and this is the point 3, 5, and negative 4. If we can find a point in three dimensions, then we should be able to find the distance between two points in three dimensions. And you've done this before in grade 10 with x and y coordinates. It's no different if we're extending up another dimension. Our equation should look familiar. To find the distance between two points in three dimensions, we're going to take the distance, the difference of the x values squared plus the difference of the y values squared plus the difference of the z values squared and square root the whole thing. So let's do that with the point um, 3, 0, and negative 7, and negative 1, 5, and 8. My formula is the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared plus z2 minus z1 squared. Plugging in my values. I get negative 1 take away 3 squared plus 5 take away 0 squared plus 8 take away negative 7 squared or 16 plus 25 plus 200 
and 25. And that has an exact value of the square root of 266. We should check and see if we can rationalize that by finding a perfect square that divides into 266. I don't think there's a possibility. So our approximate answer for the distance between these two points would be about 16.31 units. Finally, it would be helpful if we could do some sketching of planes in three dimensions. Um, and we can do that most easily by finding the x, y, and z intercepts of a plane. Um, and they're going to help us out with sketching. There are some cases we need to consider, and we'll go through those right now. So first case is when we have an equation with all three variables, x, y, and z, and our d value is not zero. So we don't have zero on one side of the equal sign. The easiest way to sketch this plane is to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the z-intercept. The x-intercept happens when y and z are zero. I end up with 2x equals 6, or x equals 3. I can plot that point. x-intercept of 3 goes about there. y-intercept happens when x is 0 and z is 0. So I end up with 3y equals 6, or solving y equals 2. I can plot that point. Finally, the z-intercept happens when x is 0 and y is 0. So our z-intercept in this question is 6. Plot that point. And now, a nice straight line, we're just going to connect these three points. And that represents a visual kind of representation of what our plane might look like. So imagine it's on an angle going through these three points on the x, y, and z axis. In our second case, we're looking at situations when the d value is 0. When this happens, we have all three values and the d value is 0, the origin is a point on our plane. I'm going to write the origin, which is 0, 0, 0, as a point on our plane. We need to find a second point. And we can do that by finding something that is on the xy plane. And if we have a point on the xy plane, the z value is equal to 0. If z is equal to 0, our equation becomes x plus 3y equals 0. And it doesn't help us so much, but it does make it a little bit easier to find some points that might satisfy this equation. For example, if x equals positive 3, y would have to equal negative 1 to make this equation So if x is positive 3 and y is negative 1, so we're kind of going back this way, we would have a second point on the plane. Our third step is to find a point on the xz plane. On the xz plane, y is equal to 0. So we have the equation x minus z equals 0. Find two points, x and z values, that make this true. We can pick anything. We can make x equal 4 and y equal 4. And we have 0. Sorry, we have 4, take away 4, which equals 0. To find those points, 4.
I think I might have marked my second point wrong, so let's just fix that. So I have the point four four. Go there. And three. And negative one. So I could go there. So we end up with a plane or a section of the plane that looks like that. In case 2a, our equation has two variables and the d value does not equal zero. We're looking at 3y plus z, so we're going to find intercepts again. So we're going to find the z-intercept, which would happen when y is zero. So 3 times zero plus z equals six. So we have a z-intercept of six. there. Our y-intercept happens when z is 0. We get a y-intercept of 2. And now if I try and find the x-intercept, the x-intercept happens when y is 0 and when z is 0. And if we look at this equation, we have zero x's plus three y's or three times zero plus one z which is zero if I plug all that in I get zero x equals six or zero equals six and as we've talked about this is a statement that is false if we're trying to find an intercept and we get zero equals a number that means there is no x intercept or none so if there's no x-intercept, then this plane has to run parallel to the x-axis and never cross it. So I can just kind of imagine extending the lines of my plane and so I have almost like a piece of wood or something leaning against a wall, right, creating that plane that never crosses the x-axis. In case 2b, now we have two variables and d equals 0. If I try and find the intercepts, the x and y intercepts, I'm going to quickly see that the origin is one point. So one point on this plane is the origin. I'm missing the z-axis. If I try and find the z-intercept, similar to last time, I'm going to have 2 times 0, minus 0, plus 0 z's equals 0, or I have 0 equals 0. Now, this is different than the last time. This is always true, which means that the z-axis is always on the plane. So I can look at the z-axis. I can pick any other point I want. To represent my plane and there is a another point that is always on the plane. So I have two points. I have the origin and the other point on the z-axis and finally I need a third point and again so to find a third point on this plane I'm going to take my equation 2x minus y equals 0 and I just need to pick any points that make this true. So I could say that x equals 2, and y would have to equal 4, and that would make this 0 out. And so the point x equals 2 and y equals 4 is also on this plane. And I can connect them like so. And there's my plane in this example. The final case is we just have an equation with one variable that describes a plane. Um, for the case where d equals zero, um, go back to the previous example. That would give you a good idea how to do it. When um, d does not equal zero, this means that the plane crosses the y-axis at y equals 2, 
mark that point. It never crosses the x-axis. It never crosses the z-axis, so it's parallel to both. And I can represent that just by extending it up a little bit, extending it down into the x-axis a little bit, and creating that little rectangular plane shape. That's one way we can represent equations of planes and points in three dimensions.